Josh, you gotta have to stop. Six. <laughs> five. Nice little riffs in, you know? Four. Three. Two. One. Hey, everyone, we are live here at Relic Studio. This is Uncle Ebenezer, a tribute to Fish. We're a Fish tribute band here in the New York area. Uh, my name is Shaheen, I'm on keys. We got Nate Searing on drums over there. Hello. And we are really excited to introduce two new members of the band today. We got Josh Klein taking the tray seat right here. And uh, as you probably already tell by the scarf, we got Eric Swinney doing the Mike Gordon. That's fully what's scarfed. <laughs> that's right, fully scarfed now. Um, we're really excited to be here, here at the Relics office. This place is great. We got the grilled cheese going outside. Um, and we are looking forward to playing Brooklyn Bowl this Sunday, uh, March 4th. Sunday morning, we're doing a Purim gig for all, all the tribe members and not tribe members out there. Want to come check it out. Those of you who know Purim know it's the uh, story of Esther in the Megillah. How perfect is that for fish? So we're going to play a little Esther for you right now. You guys ready? Yeah. Hey. It was late one fall night at a fairground near town when Esther first saw the Armenian man who groveled toward her and stood by her side with a bucket that swung in his hand. His grin stretched the folds of his pasty white cheeks and his lips hurled a dollop of murk on the curb and the lights from the rides showed a mischievous sparkle that flashed in his hollow-eyed stare. He said, little girl, you can chop off my legs and then peel off my socks if you want to. But I'd rather you took this old puppet from me that I hold in my pail as we speak. He stood looking down at the innocent girl and she stared at the bucket, bewildered. And he lifted the doll for the young girl to see and a giant smile grew on his face. She saw the doll's eyes and she couldn't resist and she thanked the man quickly and ran to the church and she burst through the doorway with puppet held high and a hush filled the chapel and the people looked mean. tried in vain to pacify the mob quibble grew to spat to wrangle then to brawl the frenzied congregation struggled desperately to fetch the pretty puppet snugly nestled deep in Esther's leather sack and Esther knew the time had come to flee she scurried down the aisle toward the doorway in the distance and out into the rainstorm where she felt she would be free but the wind was blowing harder and her skirt began to billow until finally her feet began to lift and she rose above the houses and the people and the chimneys and Esther and the doll were set adrift floating higher over the hills with the valleys and treetops they flutter and glide soaring and turning suspended on air with the earth far below them they tumble and dive through the clouds
she began to tumble earthward till she landed in the nasty part of town. She glanced about the village, sure to find the evil men who rob and pillage in the darkest hour of night. Nervously, she fumbled for the pouch that held the puppet on her rump. Joggers coming up to knock her down. As Esther stood and shook her head, the joggers were approaching, and she knew she had no choice left but to swim. As the frosty water sank its bitter teeth into her hide, she tried to slide the heavy clothing from her skin. And naked now, she made her way toward the shore. When suddenly she felt a tiny tugging at her toe And the puppet she'd forgotten Wrapped its tiny little arms around her ankles And it wouldn't let her go The waves seemed to open and swallow her whole As the doll pulled her down to the eerie green deep And the sound of the laughing old man filled her ears As she dreamt it away to a tranquil and motionless sleep.